Hi everyone, my name is Emil Salaparis and we will be presenting the Aurora Operating System, a system that provides persistence as a service. This work was done with my collaborators Ryan Hancock, Kavian Barnes and Ali Mastizare. Our work is motivated by the observation that persistence is hard and systems that ensure it do so with lots of code and development effort. For example, LevelDB has 70,000 lines of code for its persistence backend. Postgres has 200,000 lines of code for the same reason. But even these mature systems sometimes lose data, and the data loss is not even due to the logic bugs in the application itself, but rather due to their interaction with the underlying storage stack. For example, Postgres was losing data in Linux for some time because of FFSYNC calls mark wrongly marking data as flushed. So if even these systems kind of get it right, what hope is there for new applications that are building persistence using file semantics? The problem lies in the semantic gap between the in-memory and the on-disk representation of the data. And this is where a single of the stores, aka SLSs, come in. SLSs, instead of having the developer manually move data throughout the storage hierarchy, provide a unified view of the system with the applications running as if they reside wholly in memory. Moreover, SLSs provide a persistent representation to the application itself in the form of an executable application image in, the, in persistent storage. This SLS is continuously update this image while the application is executing and restore from it after a crash. The application itself is oblivious to any interruption and in fact needs no code whatsoever to handle it. Single of the stores are not a new idea. Maltese was single of the store, in fact. And back in the 60s, this made sense because the performance difference between volatile and persistent media was small, so we could propagate state to persistent storage easily. But as time went on, the performance gap between the two became larger and larger, and later attempts like Eros in the 2000s had to deal with DRAM and spinning disks whose performance differences were too large to reconcile. However, we believe that the time of SLSs has come again, because new NVMEs are orders of magnitude faster than spinning rust. And in fact, modern systems have an abundance of I.O. PCI lanes are doubling in speed every three years, and new CPUs have so many PCI lanes that they have more I.O. bandwidth than memory bandwidth. In fact, we have an extra advantage compared to legacy systems in the form of 64-bit address spaces. With five level page tables and petabytes of storage in a single virtual address space, developers can once again put all of the data in memory without resorting to external entities like files. Motivated by these hardware developments, we'll build Aurora, a fully POSIX SLS. Aurora transparently provides automatic persistence to applications after a request from user space. The main component of Aurora is the SLS orchestrator, which resides in the kernel and controls the checkpoint process. The orchestrator gathers into checkpoints all application states spread throughout the system, including kernel subsystems. Checkpoint images hold open up all of an application state, and this includes not just data, but also state that is normally considered transient. Checkpoint tasks include process and thread state, CPU state, file descriptors, and even IPC, like pipes and sockets. These checkpoints are portable across reboots and machines because they do not depend on the running kernel. Application state that does reside in the kernel is actually loosely coupled to the rest of the system, so we can easily extract it into the checkpoint. The orchestrator forwards the checkpoints to our call store that is specifically engineered for high-frequency checkpointing. Our CAN prototype does 100 checkpoints per second, far higher than the maximum frequency of more general systems like ZFS. Aurora also provides a file system on top of the store for compatibility with applications that use file.io. The object store is right now backed only by NVMe disks, since we have no need for NVDIMs for persistence. Aurora checkpoints incrementally, with the object store incorporating all increments into a full checkpoint. It does so online, so restores take constant time with the number of increments. The object store, being copy and write, does this without overriding past checkpoints. We will, here we will simulate persisting a beam process to a power loss. We turn off continuous checkpointing for effect, and we use the pickle signal to simulate the power loss. All the data before the checkpoint will persist, but all the data after it will be lost. We see here that ASLS does not consider the beam process dead, but stopped, and that is because we have a persistent image for it. We can restore from that image and continue working as if the power loss never happened.
We built Aurora for high-frequency checkpoints with modest overheads and minimal code. Let's see two examples of how we achieve this. On the metadata side, we have a fully POSIX-centric view of the system in contrast with checkpoint restore frameworks like, for example, Cryo. Instead of going through each of the application's processes, address spaces, and file tables separately and deduplicating the results, Aurora traverses each of the application's resources exactly once in the kernel. That way, we achieve two orders of magnitude faster performance than Cryo with one of the code. On the data side, we have a system shuttering mechanism that applies copyright semantics between the application as a whole and Aurora so that we parallelize dumping with execution. System shuttering addresses core limitations of fork, which is process-based and thus cannot handle either shared memory or kernel memory, like for example the contents of pipes. System shuttering, in addition, uses the TLB hardware to track the dirty set between successive checkpoints, enabling our incremental dumps. While Aurora handles applications transparently, it is also a full-fledged platform that developers can experiment on persistence with. They do so using a powerful and clear API that provides clear persistence guarantees. This is in contrast with the file API. Developers can thus checkpoint a whole application, single mapping, or even a single set of pages, getting more performance the more specialized the checkpoint is. For example, persisting a single page takes about 26 microseconds, which is comparable to the latency of the device itself. Developers that want to respond to system crashes from inside the application can do so by registering a custom handler that is triggered by Aurora using a signal after a restore. At first, we built Aurora with persistence in mind, but we quickly found out that persistent applications are a powerful and flexible abstraction with uses that have nothing to do with persistence. For example, it has obvious applications in high availability scenarios where we can stream incremental checkpoints to a remote machine while the application is executing and restore into that machine in case the local one crashes. We can also use the incremental checkpoints for debugging by treating them as an application history that we can rewind and replay to trash bugs. We can also combine Aurora with record replay systems in order to coalesce whole chunks of the record log with incremental checkpoints. This allows us to reduce memory usage to the point that we can record indefinitely. We can also use Aurora to create OS transactions. These transactions encompass more than memory and include file system state and metadata. This allows us in turn to do more generic products for security and speculative execution for performance. An application we're particularly excited about is serverless computing. In serverless computing, workloads execute in the form of functions, that is, small pieces of executable code that are dynamically injected and executed from inside a container that is created at invocation time. Creating this container is very costly and dominates total latency, especially considering that function invocation, functions themselves are very small. Solution to this is to create a coherent checkpoint that includes both an initialized container and the function itself, and we restore from that container every time there is an invocation. This keeps in a serialization step and reduces total latency. This, however, has the cost of added resource usage in the form of an image that we have to store somewhere. Aurora's unique storage hierarchy, together with its OS introspection capabilities, allow us to have different images share commonly used resources. This includes libraries and even for runtimes. It also allows these images to warm each other up by collaboratively bringing in common resources into a memory while executing. To sum up, we believe that single level stores are back. Hardware has finally allowed us to provide transparent persistence and even create an API at the OS level where it belongs for persistence guarantees for developers. At the same time, we provide a persistent application image that allows developers to, uh, to use it not just in persistent scenarios, but also in a wide array of other applications and domains, like for example, high availability, debugging, and new abstractions. Thank you very much, and I'll be happy to answer any questions.